Hey Mike. What? what? Who's got next? What's good, y'all? It's your man, Hezo, and welcome back to the Black Tower. I always got next, you feel me? We are back at it with another Hawks recap, and I'm sorry I did not get out a recap after the loss against Philly. I honestly just didn't have the mental capacity to record another depressing-ass video, man, because they lost three in a row. I just I couldn't do it. I could not find the energy to record a video for y'all, and I'm sorry for that, but I would rather you see me, you know, happy and energetic than to see me, you know, kind of depressed like I was the last couple videos. So that's why I didn't get a video out, so my apologies for that. But here we are. So Atlanta in Orlando, we finally got a dub, ending this three-game losing streak. And this was a game that we had to go and get, right? Can't drop another game to a bad team. You had to go get this win. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Leave a like on the video. We are on our way to 900 subs. And y'all got to get to 1,000, man. Y'all got to help me out. Let's get to 1,000. If y'all want to see that jersey giveaway by the end of the year, we got just about a month left. So y'all got to hit that sub button. Let's get to 1,000 by the end of the year so y'all can get this jersey giveaway. With that being said, let's get right into it. This is a game where Atlanta was coming in with a lot of injuries. A lot of guys out of the lineup. JC and, and Dre both go down with injuries. I'm going to talk about them a little bit later. Atlanta and Orlando both came out of the gate. They were, they were playing well offensively. Both teams were getting buckets. Not really shooting well from three, but both teams were scoring relatively well. Atlanta was dominating the paint. The Clint and, and Trey hookup was just absolutely on fire in the first half. The I felt, I felt like Trey was just throwing alley after alley to Clint, and it looked great. It, he was getting, he was finding his guys. He was racking up the assist in the first half. Dre goes down early in the first quarter with, I think, a, a hip a hip pointer or hip plex or whatever the hell it's called. I think it was uh, the same, same thing that was kind of bothering him coming into the game. He was listed as questionable but obviously got the start he goes out early he, i think he had like one basket goes out early hopefully he can return on friday but uh, i mean i, I don't want to see him force a return i just hope this is not a, a, a no a nagging injury throughout the season i don't think it will be because he was able to play tonight he just he took that hard hit from paolo in the first quarter which should have been a charge but it wasn't i, I couldn't believe that wasn't called because i mean paolo really ran right through his chest and there was no call which i really couldn't believe but he leaves the game very tough to see second quarter the offense started settling a little bit more turning the ball over Dejounte has been kind of careless with the with the ball these last few games games and it's it's kind of getting frustrating at this point he had a solid game overall tonight but he had a few careless turnovers when he's just over dribbling and just either losing the ball or it's getting poked by the defender and he's got to be better than that he's got to be better with the ball in his hands if he's gonna be a dominant ball handler like we have seen him in the past and I think a lot of that is the discipline he's not being coached by pop anymore he's being coached by Nate and we've seen that this Hawks team is not very disciplined we've seen it all throughout this entire season we've seen it in the past and he's got to be more disciplined discipline and guys got to hold him accountable Trey had a really good game not turning the ball over shout out to Trey very nice bounce back game Atlanta goes on a nice run in the second quarter really goes up by you know going up by 20 leading into the half and it was really just all Hawks from there the rest of the game but John Collins, man, goes down with that, that ankle injury. It really looked like it was a lot more serious than, well, hopefully it's not serious. Goes up for the alley, comes down, lands on his ankle. I, I really hope that he's not out there long. He was having a very nice game before he goes out with that injury. No, he didn't have a, a huge box score number, but he was crashing the glass. He was playing defense. JC was having a really nice game before that injury. Really, really hope that this does not nag. And again, it's not one of those nagging injuries and he can come back. He probably won't. I wouldn't bet on him to play on Friday uh, against Denver, but you never know. We'll see. It really looked like a lot a lot, a lot worse than what it was. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later in my final takeaways. So real quick, man, I want to say for all y'all Magic fans out there, if y'all are watching this video, stay patient, man. The Magic have a lot of nice young players. And when I watch Paolo Bancaro, this kid is an absolute stud. And I said this in the in the second recap of the season that I did when we played Orlando in Atlanta. Paolo Bancaro does not look like a rookie. He looks like he's been in the league for four, five, six years because of how well polished his game is. His mid-range is solid. He's a decent three-point shooter. He can get to the basket. He's athletic. This kid, Paolo, is going to be a... He, I wouldn't call him a generational player, but I think he is going to be a star player in this league. He, I think he is going to hit that next level within the next couple years. And the Magic really got a, not, I wouldn't call it a steal, obviously, because they had a number one overall pick. But they, they made the right decision, needless to say. They made the right decision drafting him number one overall because he has been clear cut the best rookie out of the class between him and Benedict, Benedict Matherin. He's a stud, man. He, he really has the entire package. 
Uh, he, I, don't, I don't know who he reminds me of, but he has, he just has a lot of, a really complete game to say the least. And he has a perfect body, pause, to really be a great player in this league. Bobo has been really solid for the Magic these last you know couple weeks. He's looking like a most improved player candidate. He was pretty quiet tonight. He had a couple nice plays, but he was pretty quiet tonight. But he's been averaging like over 18 a game over the last like five or six games. And he's been incredible all season long since he's now gotten minutes and gotten into the rotation. And shout out to Bobo, man. I've always liked this kid. I've always thought that he had potential and talent. He just really needed the right opportunity. And the Magic have a nice young core. Uh, Cole Anthony really struggled tonight, but I've always liked his game. I'm a North Carolina fan, so I love Cole Anthony. And they got a lot of, a lot of other young guys that really, uh, you know, like Franz Wagner, who didn't have the greatest game. I think he had 22 tonight, so it wasn't too bad, but he missed a couple layups around the rim. But Franz Wagner, another nice, you know, young wing who, who can really be a stretch guy in this league. I, I don't think he'll ever reach star potential. But the, again, the Magic fan, you know, y'all Magic fans, stay patient, man. Y'all might be in the running for Victor Wabanyana sweepstakes. We'll see. See what you know where y'all finish at the end of the year, but I want to get that out the way before I jump into the second half. So the second half starts and the Magic start to go, you know, make some shots and go on a little bit of a run, really trying to fight to stay stay in the game. I think they cut it to as, as low as they were down by 24, and I think they got it back to like 14 or 14 points or so. But then Trey just started carrying the offense for the Hawks. He wasn't really doing as much playmaking, but his scoring just started. To, he had 15 points in the first half. He took it up and finished with 30, so he had a, a very balanced. First and second half, I think he had 15 points in the in the third quarter alone, maybe 13 points. He really carried Atlanta's offense, got them and, and kept that lead for Atlanta. And then the fourth quarter was really just all Trey and DeJounte. Trey was doing his playmaking. DeJounte was knocking down shots, not turning the ball over as much. And Clint Capella had an excellent game, crashing the, crashing the glass, dominating in the paint. And Atlanta really just did a dominating job in the paint uh, the, the entire game. And the, that's somewhere where the mat, that's uh, an area where the Magic have struggled. I think I saw a stat that they had. They gave up like 70 points in the paint to Philly. Now, obviously, that's a lot of that's because of Embiid. That's been an error they struggled out because they don't really have a dominant rim protector. And now, Bowles a good shot blocker, but I wouldn't really call him a rim protector because he gets a lot of weak side blocks. He's he's very he's very tall and lanky, so he gets a lot of those help defense blocks. But I wouldn't really call him a dominant rim protector. And that's one thing that the Magic do really need is a solidified center because they have some nice young pieces, a nice young point guard, a nice young. Four. Obviously, I talked about Paolo. So they have guys. They just need a few more pieces to really to put it together. They need an identity. Uh, this Magic team, again, they're not a good team, but I like I like the direction that they are going. So not a very long recap, and that's mainly because Atlanta just kind of dominated this game from start to finish. I mean, starting with like midway through the second quarter, went up by 20 at halftime and really just didn't look back. The Magic started to make a couple nice runs and started to cut into the league, but just wasn't enough. Trey was too much in the end. DeJounte was too much in the end and so was Clint Capella. So we we obviously came out with a dub. Uh, great to see. Now, obviously, again, this was a, a game where I expected us to win. You cannot drop this game after you dropped one against Houston. And really the last three games should have been wins, but obviously that did not happen. This game you had to go and get, especially with a tough game on Friday coming up against Denver. We'll see who is available for that game. A couple points I want to, uh, you know, kind of go over before I get into my final takeaways. Uh, Jared Culver had a very nice game. He didn't play great offensively, but he was doing a lot of other things. He was crashing the glass, man. He had a career high in rebounds tonight. I think he finished with like 10 or 11 boards, which is very nice to see for a guy who's kind of struggling to find a home in the NBA. He was the number six overall pick and just hasn't really panned out to be you know a really good player in this league uh and i was actually kind of hoping it landed drafting him i was between him and deandre hunter when i went you know in the 2000 was that 2019 draft but luckily we didn't draft him at number four but he's just kind of really struggled but he did have a nice game tonight i think he had a, maybe a double double if i'm not mistaken maybe he had nine points close to a double double but shout out to jared culver big minutes for him tonight really stepped up uh on the defensive end and on the you know crashing the glass as well aj griffin had a nice bounce back game he was knocking down threes knocking down shots he was getting to the rim i liked it the game that aj griffin had off the bench tonight it wasn't huge it wasn't eye popping but he did just enough to lift the the hawks bench in a desperate you know a very very thin hawks bench bench tonight because like I said we were missing a lot of guys JC and Dre both went out with injuries missing two starters plus the you know the guys that were already out of the lineup so luckily Atlanta was able to hold that lead like we've seen them giving up leads 
able to hold the lead and come out with the win tonight. So my final takeaways for this game, number one was the injuries. Uh, obviously, I touched on a little bit earlier. Dre goes out midway through the first quarter. JC goes out at the end of the first half. And those are two key injuries that hopefully Atlanta can bounce back from, especially with a tough game in Denver coming up on Friday. But we do have a very favorable schedule throughout the, throughout the month of December. So hopefully Dre can get back into the lineup. Hopefully, JC can get back into the lineup. But those ankle injuries, the way he came down, it did not look good. And we've seen nagging ankle injuries throughout the NBA with a lot of guys like LaMelo and guys like that that have had nagging ankle injuries where it's kept them out of the lineup for two, three weeks at a time. So hopefully, JC is not out too long because as much as y'all don't want to admit it, we need JC. We need his defense. We need his rebounding. We need his finishing at the rim. He hasn't been great on offense this year, but he's done a lot of other great things for this team. And we need JC going forward if we're going to be able to string together some wins here in the next month or so. Number two is the paint dominance. Atlanta dominated the paint of this uh, from start to finish and Clint Capella shout out to him man. He had a huge game another double double for him. He was finishing alleys. Trey was getting to the paint. DeJounte was getting to the paint. And then just really just a, a good team effort all around and like I said, the Magic have, have really struggled to, to defend the paint. And Atlanta took advantage of that tonight with the long ball obviously not falling once again. You know, some guys hit threes. AJ Griffin hit a couple threes. Trey hit a couple. DeJounte hit a couple. But we haven't been good shooting the three all year long. I've obviously said that a, a thousand times. But very nice to see Atlanta able to get to the paint and finish in the paint and really just dominate it from start to finish. Number three was the rebounding. Everybody was crashing the glass tonight. Again, I've already touched on Jared Culver. He had double-digit rebounds. Clint had another double-double. I think he finished with like 12 or 13 boards a Kongu is crashing the glass he's been very disappointing lately but he had a solid game overall tonight hopefully he can pick it up get his confidence back and really start to play a lot better like we've seen a Kongu in the past especially like teams against like you know like the Bucks and the defensive job that he does against Giannis we need a Kongu off the bench going forward but overall great crash in the glass guys were just playing you know, playing well overall, so you love to see it. My fourth and final point was the three-headed monster, Trey, DeJounte, and Clint Capella. These three really just carried Atlanta the entire night. Uh, Trey's playmaking, Clint's finishing defense and rebounding, and then DeJounte was doing a little bit of everything, knocking down the long ball, getting to the paint. He was getting some assists, playing a little bit of defense. So these three guys, I mean, Trey finished with 30, DeJounte almost had 30, and then Clint, I'm not sure what his final stat line was, but he had a very nice game. I think he might have finished with like 18 and 12 or something around the lines of that excellent game from these three guys and we need these three to be the leaders obviously going forward hopefully this will maybe string together some confidence again the magic are on a good team but hopefully this will string together some confidence for our guys maybe string together a couple wins again we got a very tough very tough game against denver on friday it is at home so that'll help out a lot but joker is a different beast man clint's gonna have his hands full but he's not a player that Embiid is so he's not gonna you know dominate on the offensive end like Embiid does but joker does a lot of other things that Embiid doesn't like his playmaking so very tough game coming up for us on on friday and then again we have a, a relatively favorable schedule throughout the month of december leave your thoughts down in the comments let me know what y'all thought about this game overall let me know what you think about our upcoming schedule the game against denver all that good stuff as i always say magic fans i would like to hear from y'all what do y'all think about y'all's future y'all's young core all that stuff i do try and talk about every team and when i do with the recaps i do try and talk about both teams and give a little bit of praise to you know the other team as well because i, I love my hawks and I, i'm a Obviously, diehard Hawks fan, but I'm a basketball fan in general. I'm going to try and get a couple more videos out catered to other teams as well. So y'all be on the lookout for those. Leave a like on the video and I will catch y'all next episode.